Yo, what's going on, everybody? We're going to get ready to get started with the Truth League Report uh, in just a bit. We're uh, going to definitely break down my top five games from uh, this past week. And uh, we also had some breaking uh, NFL trade news uh, that came across uh, the wire um, definitely after Sunday's game and also uh, today. Uh, what happened. So we're definitely going to get into that. Uh, we're definitely going to um, talk about these trades just a little bit. And then, of course, I go into my top five games and also my top five ballers uh, from this past Sunday. So we're going to get ready to get started. Make sure you share this show out. Uh, this is also going to be on Spotify, it, um, Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio later on tonight. So uh, you could definitely go and uh, download that if uh, you're not able to stay the entire show. So we're going to get ready to get started in less than 60 seconds. What's going on, football fans, everybody out there? Welcome into Truth League Report. I'm your man, Chris, a.k.a. Blue Enforcer, a.k.a. The Truth. And uh, I definitely do thank everybody for tuning in uh, to this show tonight. I see we have a couple of people in here. We got my guy, AZ Mick, and I see we got a couple. We got a Philly fan in the house, and uh, definitely glad that you're able to join. This is a show for all football fans. It's not just... Of course, I am a Tennessee Titans fan, but this is about all of the NFL. This is not just about the Tennessee Titans. We're definitely going to get into everything NFL. Uh, of course, some big trades uh, have been made. And, of course, uh, a couple of other trades that I forgot to mention uh, were also made. So we're definitely going to talk about that. And then, of course, again, we're going to get into my top five games from this past Sunday and Monday night. And also uh, my top ballers from uh, this week as well. So we're definitely going to get into all of that. Again, uh, please do make sure uh, you do share uh, this show out. Uh, if you could, uh, you will be helping me uh, and everything as well. So uh, definitely make sure uh, you do share this show out, uh, whether it be on Facebook, on Instagram, or on Twitter. Uh, of course, the pages are below. Uh, TNT Enforcers is the fan page on Facebook, uh, on Twitter at TNT Blue Enforcer, and on Instagram at Titans underscore N underscore Truth. And also make sure that you hit that like button uh, on this channel. If you're new to the show, uh, you know, you could definitely give me a like. Uh, you definitely be helping me. And also make sure uh, you do subscribe uh, to the channel as well. Uh, definitely go ahead and smash that like button. Uh, I mean, that subscribe button and the bell. So then that way uh, you'll know when new episodes are coming up and everything. And, you know, we're definitely going to bring you the best in some of the breaking news as it comes out. So we're definitely going to uh, talk about that as well. And uh, again, make sure y'all give us like button also uh, in liking the show. But Let's get into it. Uh, we definitely had uh, also 
Uh, you know, we had some injury news uh, come out around the NFL as well. Uh, definitely uh, Chargers, J.C. Jackson. Uh, you know, the Chargers, J.C. Jackson uh, will be out for the remainder of the season uh, due to injury. Uh, you know, in the injury that he suffered in the game against uh, in the game against the Seattle Seahawks. Um, you know, he had a dislocated kneecap uh, in loss uh, to the Seahawks. He will be out for the remainder of the season. Also, Mike Williams, the Chargers wide receiver, has a high ankle sprain. He's going to miss multiple weeks uh, due to that injury. And, and also, uh, DK Metcalf in that exact same game, um, towards had a uh, issue with his patella tendon, uh, but they're saying that he won't need surgery. Uh, that he won't mean he won't need surgery, but he's gonna obviously uh, be out for some time as well. Uh, in New York, Brees Hall torn ACL. He is gonna be out for the rest of the season as well, and. Uh, also, right tackle Elijah Vera Tucker will also, I believe, he had a ruptured, uh, a uh, ruptured uh, injury as well. I'm trying to uh, get that information. I forgot to um, update that. But Elijah Vera Tucker, uh, let's see, tricep. He had a ruptured tricep injury he's out for the rest of the year as well so there's definitely a lot of injury news that have went out and um i mean that's definitely going to hurt some teams and things like that of course all the team scores are going across uh the bottom of the ticker right there and everything and also all the shows are going to be on spotify iHeartRadio, apple podcast and google podcast as well but the jets with their problem at running back with Brees Hall, who was becoming a star and was a resident baller on this show, is out for the season due to injury. But what the Jets go ahead and did is that they acquired uh, Jaguars running back James Robinson, and uh, they sent to the Jags a conditional uh, 2023 sixth-round pick uh, back to Jacksonville. So uh, the uh, the Jags get a pick, and the Jets get a running back who could do some of the same things that Brees Hall can do. Like, James Robinson was very impressive as an undrafted rookie for the Jaguars. Came out, had over 1,000 yards. Uh, had over a thousand yards uh, in his rookie season. Was definitely uh, one of the more improved running backs in football, and I mean, extremely impressive. But of course, we see that uh, you know we definitely see that they have decided mainly to go uh, with um, they've decided to go with Travis Etienne. So. That is why that trade was happening. They basically preferred Travis Etienne over um, James Robinson. So that's why James Robinson got traded. He now goes to the Jets, who are doing very well, by the way. So he definitely replaces Brees Hall uh, in a very nice way, and they basically don't lose. They basically get the same type of back. So that was actually very good. Also, other breaking news, this happened today was that um and i know uh a certain couple of eagle fans are going to be very happy the bears uh the eagles gain robert uh defensive end robert quinn from the chicago bears and they send back to the bears a fourth round pick uh, a fourth round pick in next year's draft and so now the eagles they just continue to bolster up the defense a defense that was already doing very well, especially again, turnovers just got better. The undefeated Eagles, I should say, uh, when it comes to that. So those are a couple of the major moves uh, that have definitely been made. Some other moves uh, were definitely made as well. Again, uh, the Jets get James Robinson from the Jaguars, a running back 
for a conditional uh, sixth round pick. And then um the and then of course today Robert Quinn to the Eagles for a fourth round pick. Some other trades that of course happened. Uh, you know, Christian McCaffrey uh got traded from Carolina to San Francisco for um for a second, third, and fourth round pick next year, and a fifth round pick, I believe, in 2024, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, Carolina also traded Robbie Anderson. Uh, for a 2024 sixth and seventh round pick. The Raiders also struck a deal. Um, they traded uh, defensive lineman Jonathan Hankins to Dallas. Uh, they traded Jonathan Hankins and a seventh round pick to the Dallas Cowboys, uh, and they get back a sixth round pick uh, for Jonathan Hankins. So definitely some trades happening. Uh, some trades are being made, and hopefully – a certain team that I support gets in on all the trade fund and go and get a wide receiver or, or, and, or maybe a offensive lineman. So I would definitely hope for that. Uh, but that was definitely some of the big injury news and also some of the big trade news that have come out so far. Also, um, Matt Jones, even though he was benched in the loss to the Chicago bears, will start again against the Jets. So I don't like that situation, what they're doing, what Bill Belichick is doing in New England, is the fact that, um, you know, that they're deciding, you know what, we're just going to go back and forth on this thing. I mean, honestly enough, if they had trade, if they had decided to go with Bailey Zappi, it's basically saying they gave up on Matt Jones and uh, have decided, you know what? We just can't do it. I, I know I see Fly Eagles Fly and Robert Quinn. I know there's definitely there. But, again, you know, if if the Patriots decided to go with Bailey Zappi, you can't turn back. So I think that's why they probably tried to give Matt Jones one more chance, and then if he doesn't produce, then he's pretty much gone. And so another uh, piece of news that I definitely saw coming out as well, I believe this is with Dan uh, Graziano uh, in regards to uh, Bradley Chubb, because I know uh, Denver is definitely in a uh, free fall, and it was something that we were hearing about is that Bradley Chubb could definitely get traded, especially if they lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars in London. And so I believe this was reported. Uh, I'm trying to get the report uh, about that. I believe that was from uh, Dan Graziano. Uh, I believe that was from Dan Graziano who uh, said that, yeah, Bradley Chubb, could definitely get traded uh, if, you know, they lose, if they lose in this. And also there were definitely some rumors that uh, there were also some rumors that Nathaniel Hackett might get fired if they lose this game as well. So, I mean, there's a lot going on in Denver, you know, especially with, um, you know, with Chubb, uh, there's possibly Jerry Judy could be traded or KJ Hamler uh, could get traded. I mean, I was listening to uh, one of the local uh, Nashville stations. What about Cortland Sutton? You know, that could be a possibility. Uh, also, there were rumor is that um, that um, guard Dalton Riser could be had at a um, at the right price. So, I mean, there is a lot of, um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of news that's churning uh, around the league. And, I mean, you know, teams, you know, if you're trying to compete for uh, a Super Bowl, you definitely might want to make sure you get in. If you feel like you're a player or two away from really competing, you better go for it. You better go get it while you can. And, you know, try not to give up a whole bunch for it. So that's going to be definitely very interesting to see how a lot of this 
uh, continues to play out as the trade deadline approaches. The trade deadline, of course, is November 1st. So next Tuesday is the trade deadline. So right after Halloween is the NFL trade deadline. So we're definitely going to see what more action could definitely come. I know Carolina has said they're not considering trading DJ Moore or Brian Burns, Derek Brown, or cornerback J.C. Horn. Although the Titans said that about A.J. Brown, and we see what happens. So let's go ahead and continue on, and we get into our top five games of this past week. Now, of course, I'm going to mention first, this is not one of the top five. My Tennessee Titans took care of business 19 to 10 over the Indianapolis Colts. They're four and two. The Colts have fallen uh to three, three, and one. And um, and then also what they have also done, they've benched Matt Ryan in favor of Sam Ellinger, not Nick Foles. And they have already said Sam Ellinger is going to be the quarterback for the rest of the season. And they claim, and the Colts have come out and said they claim they're not waving the white flag, even though I kind of think they have. So that was a very, you know, that was a very good game. I think the Titans might have just killed the Colts pretty much. But let's get into the top five games from this past week uh, that I thought were uh, impressive. And uh, we're definitely going to, you know, definitely make this happen. Uh, let me see. Give me just a second. I'm missing one. I never understand how is it that um, I have everything I need in one area, and then it's like one is missing that I'm not supposed to miss. But, you know, computers, you know what I'm saying? They can be uh, tricky. So, you know, we're definitely going to fix that. But coming in at number five, we have the Green Bay Packers falling to the Washington Commanders, 23-21. I mean, I don't know what's happening with Green Bay. I mean, they have uh, lost a few straight games uh, recently, of course. They lost to the Jets at home. You know, they lost to the Jets at home and now have lost to the Washington Commanders. Um, and, and, you know, they, uh, of course, they beat the Patriots and everything. But right now, the Green Bay Packers, something's not going right. Uh, they're in, uh, in Lambeau. And so, you know, Title Town has had some issues. They've lost three in a row. They have lost three in a row right now, and they have the Bills in Buffalo on Sunday night coming up. Uh, so the Packers better find a way to get it together, or they could be heading completely downhill. Of course, my Titan play the Packers. Maybe the Packers are in a free fall uh, by then. And then we, you know, might be in a pretty good situation. But, I mean, the Packers, right now, they got some questions. They could definitely uh, use a wide receiver since they traded away Devontae Adams and uh, could definitely use some help uh, in that situation. So, I mean, you know, definitely um, the, the, the Packers are in trouble. The Packers are in trouble. They are definitely in uh in, in some very, very deep, deep trouble. They're three and four on the season. So they are not in very good shape right now. But the commanders, of course, you know, they're not very good either. But um, of course, they, you know, had uh they lost to my Titans, and then um they've reeled off two in a row uh so far i mean they've beaten the bears they beat the bears on thursday night and then of course carson wentz gets hurt taylor heineke comes in and leads them to a come from behind win they were down 14-3 at one point in this game and they just they found a way back and uh they were able to fight back and get a win over the green bay packers they're now of course three and four even though they're about two games behind in the NFC East, but they are, you know, 
they're about, well, I'm sorry, they're three games behind the AFC East. So, I mean, they could climb back into it. It could be interesting. But, I mean, right now, Washington, not very good. But, I mean, this is more about the Packers losing than the uh, Commanders winning. Not a very good showing uh, by the Washington, uh, by the Green Bay Packers. Number four, another team that's kind of in almost a free fall almost at a free fall is, and, you know, I got Browse Rex asking what was my biggest upset, uh, what was the biggest upset of this week? And honestly enough, I would definitely have to say it was this one. Tap, uh, Carolina 21-3 to over Tampa Bay. I think these two games, I mean, Green Bay, Washington, you know, Green Bay losing to Washington, Tampa Bay losing to Carolina were definitely a couple of upsets I don't think anybody saw coming. And, you know, I know everybody's going to think that, you know, you got uh, Golden Boy Brady dealing with the issues with Giselle and the divorce that's going on and everything. And I know that's what a lot of people are going to go with uh, as far as what's going on in Tampa Bay. But right now, it just seems like something is just off in Tampa Bay. But the NFC South is not very good right now. They're three and four, and they lead the division. The Atlanta Falcons are right there as well. So, I mean, you know, there's a game out between first and last. There's a one-game difference between the first-place team in the NFC South and the last-place team in the NFC South. I mean, could Carolina climb themselves out of the gutter, which when they fired that rule, everybody, including myself, thought this team was being left for dead. And they find a way to cl- they find a way to completely shut down the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And you can kind of tell in this game, Tampa Bay just their heart was just not in this game. Like they just seemed like they did not want to be there. They did not want to be there. They did not want to play. Carolina was fighting like they wanted to play. And you know, they had some very good. Uh, so very good things going. DJ Moore uh, had a nice touchdown catch. Was very nice. PJ uh, Walker was pretty decent in his first start. Uh, really, his second start rather. And so you know, Carolina maybe trying to see if they can turn this thing around. Even though we thought that was a dumpster fire um, in um, in Carolina, but. You know, we'll definitely have to see where this is going. But the NFC East, I mean, the AFC, I'm sorry, the NFC South is pretty much up for grabs. I mean, anybody could win that one. Because the best team is three and four, and then the worst team is two and five. So anybody can win. Another impressive victory coming in at number three was the Chicago Bears. And I watched this game on Monday night, and I have to admit I was impressed, and I also like to thank uh, the Bears. I like to thank the Bears for, you know, helping me win some money. Thank you for helping me win some money on this because I believe the Bears were a nine-point underdog, and I picked the Bears to cover. Wasn't sure they were going to win, but – Excuse me, they did more than cover. They won, and they won me a little bit of dough. So I am definitely satisfied by that. Thank you to the Chicago Bears. Justin Fields uh, was definitely um, did some good things both in the air and on the ground. And then, of course, we know about the benching of Matt Jones after he threw, a, uh, I believe, a big interception uh, on one of the first drives of the game. And then Bailey Zappi comes in and immediately led him to a touchdown drive. But then Bailey Zappi had his struggles as well. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this means much for the Bears. They're three and four. You know, right now they're two games behind the Minnesota Vikings for first place in the NFC North, especially with Green Bay going down. So what I tell you now is the NFL has so much parity is that, <laughs> really, 
anybody, it's anybody's game. You know, in the AFC, everybody's going to say it is, you know, Buffalo. It's going to be Buffalo, Kansas City, and everybody else. My Titans are third place in the AFC right now. I mean, hey, you know, last year we got lucky and got hot when some other teams started to fall off late. I mean, that could happen for us again. We'll definitely see. But, I mean, for the NFC, I mean, anybody's game. It's anybody's ball game right now. You know, nobody has really distanced themselves. I mean, the Giants are 6-1. and one, The Eagles are 6-0 and oh, coming off of a bye. Minnesota's 5-1. and one, And then you got a bunch of 4-3 and three and 3-4s. Three and so, I mean, anybody could get caught. And so that's something that you're definitely going to find out and definitely going to see. Uh, let's see. Rousey Rex says, what do you think will happen with CMC now traded? Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Carolina. You know, he was in San Francisco. He's getting used to that offense. I think uh, run CMC could be very effective out there because, uh, you know, he could catch out of the backfield. He could also run between the tackles. I mean, him and Debo Samuel could be a very nice combination. But you know, they still got a question at the quarterback position. Can Jimmy Garoppolo lead them uh to a to a you know to a championship? And I mean he's gotten them to a Super Bowl, but we still don't know if we still don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo is good enough to lead a team to a championship. So that's still something that's gonna be very uh telling. But my top two games, number two, the Cincinnati them. Them Cincinnati Bengals, them jungle cats getting it done. And that offense is starting to wake up. 35-17 over the Atlanta Falcons, even though the Falcons are three and four. Uh, you know, they uh definitely have uh some improvement done, but they still got some work to do. But man, the Bengals put on a show. They put on an absolute show. We're definitely going to be talking about them. Uh, definitely got a couple of resident ballers on that team as well. So I definitely was very impressed with what Cincinnati was doing, 35-17. to 17. I, You know, I like that. I think Cincinnati is starting to find themselves uh, a little bit after a, you know, kind of a sluggish start. They're now 4-3 and three and right there with the Ravens uh, for first place in the AFC North, even though the Ravens, beat them earlier this year. Uh, they still got another matchup, so Cincinnati could catch them. Again, early on in the year, it looked like Cincinnati was heading into that, you know, um, Super Bowl hangover, but now they've kind of, you know, uh, they've kind of found themselves a bit too and are working their way back. So, I mean, it, you know, winning's hard in this league, but you know, you start to kind of get on a roll. You start to kind of build some confidence, and that can lead to some very good things. But the number one game of the week, the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City putting up 44 on San Francisco, 30 in the second half. And, I mean, Patrick Mahomes and gang lit San Francisco up lit them up and it was wasn't even close at all not close because i mean after you know um in the second half i mean it just seemed like the um the chiefs just started just pouring it on and the 49ers had absolutely no quit no answer uh for them of course, Jimmy G, you know, there was one sequence where on back-to-back -back plays that uh, on back-to-back -back plays, he uh, got sacked by Frank Clark and one resulted in a safety. And then, of course, you know, Patrick Mahomes got to Juju Smith and Marquez Valdez-Scantling, and they just, they took care of business. And they are a scoring, a big-time scoring machine. And they could do that to any team at any point in time. So that are those are my top five games from uh, this past Sunday. And let's see. 
Uh, appreciate Browser Rex coming in. Browsy Rex, I hope I'm saying the name right. I apologize if I did. He said, are there any teams you think everyone should watch out for? Let's see. Well, you know what? I'm going to say this. And this goes into my top ballers. Um, into my top ballers. This one is a honorable mention of top ballers, and that is everybody needs to watch out for the Big Apple. Watch out for the Big Apple because something is brewing. Something is brewing in the Big Apple. Both teams are good right now. The Jets are off to a 5-2 and two start. Of course, after you know, winning in Green Bay, and then they blew out Miami, and they get a victory in Denver over the hapless Broncos. The Giants, you know, of course, beat the Packers in London, and now, of course, they beat the Jags. They're 6-1 and one right now. And so, you know, the Jets, of course, they do have some – Tough games coming up. They still got to play Buffalo, you know, a couple of times. The Giants still got to go up with Dallas and with Philly uh, later this year. So that's going to be a couple of very interesting matchups for these two teams. Find out if if the Big Apple is for real. So I would definitely say right now, the Jets and the Giants are on a roll. I mean, right now, New York. New York City is lit right now in football. And I mean, I didn't think I would ever say that, but they are lit in football at this very moment. Um, but I would say some undercover teams to watch out for um, in the AFC. You know, in the AFC, uh, again, one team that we got to, you know, be cognizant of, you know, I would definitely say, be careful of Miami. Miami, you know, they could sneak up in there and still be pretty good. I think the AFC East, you know, especially with Buffalo, New York, and maybe Miami, that could be kind of a nice little dog fight. So I would watch out for Miami as well. But the Jets and the Giants, uh, but I'm just saying other than the, those teams because they're at the top, uh, definitely uh, Miami in the AFC. In the NFC, a team that I would say could be on the up and coming, Seattle for one. Seattle is sneaky decent right now. They're four and three. They beat the Chargers in LA. Oh, uh, I did not expect this with the uh with the Chargers. Uh, if y'all went back and watched my, um, I think I did a prediction show on the AFC West. I did not have the Seahawks doing anything close to what they've done. Just like the Giants, they have completely blown away my expectation. I thought the Giants were only going to win like two games. I thought the Seahawks were only going to win like three. And they've done way more than that. And so I think they've, went above and beyond as far as I'm concerned. So definitely impressed. If my Tennessee Titans make a move in the trade area, I would say watch out for my Titans, especially if they get it together uh, offensively. Uh, I think our defense is getting better. Uh, is getting much better. I think they're definitely better than the 26th ranked defense that they are because I think some things are getting good on that side of the ball, but, you know, it's offense that's going to hold us back. And so that's something that we definitely got to fix. So um, that's what I would say in regards to that. And wow, just saw this on Bleacher Report. Roquan Smith was in tears when he finds out that Robert Quinn got traded. Uh, and, you know, early on, Robert uh, Roquan Smith won it out of Chicago uh, before the season started. So, you know, he's, you know, definitely showing his displeasure in this particular trade. So that, I mean, what could happen there? So we're definitely going to see. 
But uh, those are a couple of teams that I just think could be somebody to watch out for. Seattle, Miami, along with Big Apple Balling in New York. So let's quickly get into my top five ballers. And, of course, we're going to definitely bring you more trade news if we do see it. Number five, Justin Fields of the Bears. 14 to 21, 179 yards passing and a touchdown. Also have 14 carries, 82 yards and another touchdown. Leading the Bears well over almost 160, almost 260 yards of a total offense from scrimmage for Justin Fields, leading them to a 33-14 victory over the New England Patriots in Foxborough. So shout out to Justin Fields. Number four. Former Tennessee Titan running back, now Panthers running back, Deontay Foreman. 15 carries, 188 yards. Dag, I miss him. I miss Deontay Foreman because that dude did some work for Tennessee, and he's definitely doing some work uh, in Carolina. He's going to get more work now that Christian McCaffrey's gone and Chubba Hubbard uh, suffered an injury, so he's going to be out for some time. So more Deontay Foreman. Definitely on the way. At number three, I'm going back. I'm going back to the key city. I'm going back to the Pacific Northwest of Seattle. Former Michigan State running back Kenneth Walker, a Doke Walker Award winner. 20 Kenneth Walker the third, 23 carries, a buck 68, two scores, helping the Seahawks to four and three with that 37-23 victory over the Los Angeles Chargers. And I'm like, yes. Kenneth Walker, I, I looked at him too. I was like, man, that he's a nice back. He's a very good back, and Seattle's lucky to have him, especially when Chris Carson retired. So he pit, basically picks up right where they left off. Very impressive for Pete Carroll and Bunch. Number two. I go with the Bayou Bengals dominance up in Cincinnati. And we're talking about that LSU duo plus one. So we're talking about Joe Burrow, who threw for 481 yards, three touchdowns in the victory against uh, the Falcons. Of course, Jamar Chase had eight catches, 130 yards, two TDs. Also, Tyler Boyd had eight catches, 155 yards, and a TD. And T. Higgins nearly had 100 yards as well. So, I mean, we've seen in Cincinnati, they can air it out. They've had three 1,000-yard receivers before, I want to say. It was either that or um, I know they had – I know Chase was over 1,400 yards. I know T. Higgins was over 1,000 yards. And I think Tyler Boyd was right there at 1,000 yards, like maybe within like less than 100 yards. So, I mean, the Bengals, their pass happened. They'll throw it up. Burrow is definitely a star quarterback. Last but not least, at number one, that killing machine in Kansas City. That scoring machine, the Chiefs' kingdom. Chiefs getting the high score. Mahomes throwing for 423 and three touchdowns. Juju says Schuster had seven for seven catches for 124 and a score. And Marquez Valdez Scanling had three catches, 111 yards, as they just completely put it on the San Francisco 49ers, 44-23. And so, uh, of course, they're going into a bye week two weeks from now on Sunday Night Football. My Tennessee Titans come to Kansas City, and it's going to be very interesting to see how that game is going to go. Can we do something offensively? So uh, definitely talk about that. And, of course, I'm not going to lie and say, of course, another baller, as some people have mentioned, my guy, my king, Derrick Henry. 30 carries, 128 in a big victory over the Indianapolis Colts, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, And so that's definitely something there. And if you're watching the show, of course, in about the next 20 minutes or so, just uh, stay on YouTube and come on and watch TNT tonight uh, as we talk about the Tennessee Titans getting ready to take on the Houston Texans. And, of course, we're going to talk about the new stadium that could be coming to Nashville as well. 
So I definitely do appreciate that. Uh, Browsy Rex says, as a Bears fan, I would like to know, do you think the Dallas Cowboys will be better off with Dak or will they struggle offensively for the first couple of weeks? Well, they look like they didn't struggle against the Detroit Lions. I think early on they were kind of trying to figure themselves out, uh, bringing that back in. But I think they kind of started to find themselves later uh, in that game. They, of course, beat Detroit 24-6. to So I think the Bears, I mean, I think the uh, the Cowboys could definitely find themselves again. Um, you know, they just, right now, they got to kind of get some things worked out on the offensive line. You know, Zeke is definitely kind of heading downhill, but Tony Pollard is heading up. I do, of course, love C.D. Lamb, and I believe the um, the other um, wide receiver out there, I believe number 85, I believe his name is Brown. I'm trying to get um, his name. I'm going to get it right now uh, on that, but... Definitely do um like what I see uh in Dallas. Uh, you know, even though they had that bad performance, Noah Brown, that's who that is. Noah Brown has made some nice catches. Um, so I mean, even though they had that kind of tough performance against the uh Philadelphia Eagles, I don't think the Cowboys are out of it. I still think they have a uh, very good opportunity. Um, the Bears, I think they're kind of regrouping right now, of course, losing Robert Quinn. They're trying to see if Justin Fields can be their guy, although they could definitely use some help on the offensive line. I do like David Montgomery, the running back. I think the running game for the Bears could be very helpful to Justin Fields, but I think the defense is taking a bit of a hit. Uh, Mark Jones coming in talking about a couple of balls. Uh, Jalen Hyatt and Hooker, Hendon Hooker, like them both. Yeah, in Tennessee, uh, the Vols have a big game coming up against Kentucky, and they better not look past Kentucky looking forward to Georgia. Uh, so, you know, Hendon Hooker looks like he could be a uh, either a late first or second round draft pick. Jalen Hyatt has definitely entered the conversation as well. So, I, I you know, definitely uh, think about that. Uh, of course, my guy Jimmy saying, see you in December with Robert Quinn. I am not worried about the Eagles defensively. Good luck stopping Derrick Henry. That's what I would say about that. Good luck stopping the beast. You will bend the knee to the king. So, uh, <laughs> Browsy Rex says, I am so glad I am not a fan of the Lions. <laughs> I know that's right. Uh, let's see. I backwards says, tighten up. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Montgomery Herbert, I like that. I definitely like him. So, Browsy Rex, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, definitely uh, get out to your fellow Bear fans. Like I said, this is a show for all the NFL. This is not just uh, about my Tennessee Titans. This is about all teams. And I'm, you know, of course, learning, you know, more about other teams and stuff like that. So, I need y'all help sometimes, too, because I know I'm not perfect. I'm going to screw some things up. And that's why I can use y'all to help me right the ship. So uh, I definitely appreciate everybody watching the show. But those are my top five ballers uh, and everything. And like I said, the trades that came out, of course, Robert Quinn going um, to the Eagles. Also, James Robinson going to the Jets. Also, some breaking news that came out from Sunday as well is that the Chiefs' Frank Clark uh, will be suspended the next two games for um, violating a uh, a policy, and uh, uh, so he won't be available the next two games, and that includes that includes my uh, team, the Tennessee Titans. Um, won't be playing in that game. He violated the NFL's personal conduct policy, and so he will be out the next two games. And that does include when they face off with my Tennessee Titans. So maybe that might help us up a little bit um, and everything. So everybody, again, make sure uh, you do share this show out uh, if you haven't already. Also, make sure um, – you definitely hit that uh, definitely hit that like button if you haven't already. And if you are new to the show, please give me a like button. Let me know what you think of the show. And also uh, subscribe to the channel uh, and hit that bell uh, so that way you get notified of 
all all the shows that are coming. I usually do Tennessee Titan shows on Wednesday. On Monday or Tuesday, I do uh, the Truth League Report talking about, um, you know, things that happen after, uh, you know, things around the league that happen, any trades, any news, any injury news. We're definitely going to do that. I'm trying to get better with making sure I do my picks and everything as well. So if you're new to the show, like Browser Rex, uh, make sure y'all go ahead and tune in. Uh, and make sure y'all um, join the show and subscribe. Mark Jones saying, John Morant balling. Yeah, in the NBA, everybody's going well to go ahead, shine that MVP trophy up and give it to John Morant now. They just need to go ahead and give it to him right now because that's over. MVP race is over. John Morant's your MVP. You might as well give it to him. So, everybody, I'm about to get out of here for a quick moment. Again, um, if you like... Uh, in about maybe 10 minutes, come on over, stay on YouTube, and uh, join me for TNT tonight, uh, Titans of Truth tonight, uh, as we uh, get ready to talk about Titans and Texans, uh, talk about the new stadium uh, and everything, and, um, you know, we may get into a little bit of trade talk about some guys that maybe we could take a look at, so thank y'all for tuning in to the Truth League Report, and y'all have yourselves a very cool rest of your night. Uh, thank y'all so much.